Welcome back everyone to a brand new updated edition of the best solo shuffle carries for patch 10.0.7. As always, we'll be breaking down the best two specs for melee, ranged, and healers. These recommendations are designed to give you the best chance at carrying your teammates through solo shuffle regardless of your rating. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you truly want to climb rating in WoW Arena. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. We do this because our service is proven to work and if it doesn't you don't pay learn more at the end of the video or click the link in the description below anyway let's get started carrying as a melee and solo shuffle is all about how well you can exert pressure and close out games yourself and one of the best carry melees for accomplishing this goal for yet another patch is of course going to be retribution paladin if you've been playing recently, you'd know that the entire Paladin class got a major rework in the 07 patch, with Rhett being on the receiving end of some massive damage buffs. And ever since then, Retribution Paladins have been the undisputed kings of solo shuffle. Even despite Blizzard's best efforts to bring them more in line with other melee, doing what seems like a new round of hotfix nerfs every couple of days over the last few weeks. But now, with the season end looming, it's very unlikely that we're going to see another round of fixes before it's over, meaning the position Rhett are in now is how they're going to end the season, which undeniably is in a great spot, as Retribution brings pretty much everything you could ever look for in a carry for solo shuffle. A large part of that being the 1 minute cooldown on Avenging Wrath combined with its long duration, as you can effortlessly control the momentum of the game and force any number of defensive cooldowns from your opponents straight out of the gates while it's active. And even outside of your wings, the sustained damage still remains to be very high. Red isn't all about damage though and still leaves room for you to also simultaneously carry and support your team with your utility, where despite nerfs, you can still aid your team by either keeping them alive with strong off heals, prevent damage with spell warding or blessing of protection, or even keep your team out of crowd control with freedom and sanctuary. Sturdy, strong, faithful, safe, and humble, Arms Warriors this season have been like that one person in your life that you can always rely on. They've been at the top of the solo shuffle food chain for practically the entire season and are one of the specs that have received the least changes overall in Dragonflight. Almost every melee has some glaring weaknesses that can be exploited, or can suffer from struggling with bad or less favorable lobbies. Arms Warrior, for the most part, is the exception. Sure, you can still get big maps with triple casters, but even then, Warrior can still perform better than practically any other melee. A big reason for this and why they have so much success in Solo Shuffle is that Warriors can synergize with any class. On the damage front, you've got that consistent high sustained pressure, especially when playing the more recently adapted bleed based build centered around thunderous roar. Coupled with powerful healing reductions from Mortal Strike and Sharpened Blade, then aside from just overwhelming sustained pressure, Warrior also brings so much more to the table. Like easy to use crowd control in the form of Storm Bolt or Intimidating Shout, both having their uses when either offensively put on healers or defensively to peel for your team. And it doesn't stop there, you've also got access to Disarm, Intervene, Rallying Cry, and even War Banner, all of which have a multitude of uses to help support either yourself or your team. So if you're looking for that safe melee pick to carry your solo shuffle partners and reach your rating goals this season, then look no further than Arms Warrior. Carrying the game as a ranged DPS in solo shuffle is an uphill battle nowadays. The majority of ranged are either too easily shut down and exploited, or just can't deal enough pressure alone to close out a game. The exception to this and undisputed best solo carry range for another patch remains to be Beast Mastery Hunter. When we think Beast Mastery, the first thing that comes to our mind is how they're ubiquitous for being so easy to play. And when you consider a scenario like Solo Shuffle where dampening is a huge pivot point, the specs that do well are those that can just very easily get out unhindered damage. Beast Mastery, as we know, is constantly dishing out high sustained pressure, coupled with a healing reduction effect from their pet, and even despite a 3% nerf recently, are still much stronger since the buff to Death Chakram and Rejuvenating Winds. You also have to consider how impactful the ability to avoid damage and kite melee with extensive mobility while still being able to put out pressure can be for a ranged spec. Then even against casters, BM Hunters can be nigh impossible to kill since they can safely camp the pillar while still being able to do almost all their damage. Damage. In most cases, their damage and survivability would quite honestly be enough to win most games, putting enemy healers in a situation where they just can't recover anymore. But what allows you to carry even further as BM Hunter is the fact that you have some of the most reliable crowd control in the entire game to use on healers, in the form of Freezing Trap, Scatter Shot, and Intimidation Stun. 
Combined, these CC combos are insanely powerful for Solo Shuffle, and are almost guaranteed to help contribute to kills without much effort since all of it is instant cast. And it demands that your enemies rotate defensive cooldowns perfectly to be able to deal with the consistent onslaught of pressure that you're capable of dishing out. And as we all know, perfect coordination doesn't happen in Solo Shuffle. So when you consider the abundance of instant crowd control, hard to prevent high sustained pressure and good survivability, you can see why Beast Mastery Hunter are undeniably one of the best specs to carry solo shuffle at any rating threshold. To stay on theme, dealing high damage and putting the enemy team under constant pressure is most of the time enough to win games by itself in Solo Shuffle, and another great example of this is Demonology Warlock. In many ways, Demo is the arms warrior of caster DPS. It's humble and not designed to do anything flashy. Instead of looking to quickly end games, it carries more by slowing the arena down and winning by attrition. They're inherently durable when compared to most other ranged specs, and despite being a caster, are not as susceptible to being shut down. The main reason for this is that the bulk of your damage as Demonology Warlock actually comes passively from your pet Felguard and instant casts like Doom or Dreadstalkers. But unlike Beast Mastery, you then also have the ability to burst incredibly hard with Demonic Tyrant. And as we're seeing, what makes a good solo shuffle ranged is that combination of easy to dish out high damage coupled with crowd control, and Demonology also excels at the latter. Where between Spammable Fear, Mortal Coil, Shadow Fury, Call Fell Hunter, and two axe tosses, Demo Warlocks are one of the few casters with instant forms of lockdown, all of which make it easy to either close out games or peel for yourself or your team. Also, it has to be said that there has always been this conception that Demonology Warlock is quite an involved and complex spec, demanding a lot of buildup, hard casting, and pet management. Nowadays, though, in PvP, this just isn't the case anymore. Demonology is about as simple as it gets, especially with the introduction of the recently buffed Reign of Tyranny, giving a 50% increase baseline, which makes setting up tyrants a breeze, even when being shut down. So if you're looking for more of a conventional caster to brave the end of season solo shuffle cues with, then look no further than Demonology Warlock. It's easy to understand how DPS can carry games, but carrying from a healer point of view can include varying factors. Our first solo queue healer recommendation is a spec that's had its fair share of the limelight this season, Disciplined Priest. Discipline, prior to its nerfs, was the epitome of a carry healer, having the ability to keep its team alive while also carrying the game with out-of-this-world damage output rivaling any DPS spec. But ever since the fixes to expiation and all-around nerfs, this is no longer the case. So how can we justify Discipline being a carry healer? Well, in a recent round of hotfixes, Discipline received a rather drastic buff, increasing the effectiveness of Power Ward Shield by 25%. This alone, while it may seem minor, managed to catapult Disciplined Priests into being one of the strongest healers at just keeping their team alive. When played with a more conservative, defensive playstyle, Discipline surprisingly excels at dealing with consistent damage, as you now have very strong healing between the combination of Radiance, Penance, and the now buffed Power Word Shield. Then, as we all know, no other healer is capable of rivaling the sheer amount of defensive cooldowns that Discipline brings to the table. Having two charges of Pain Suppression, Power Word Barrier, and even Void Shift to rotate through in order to keep your team alive. That being said, the DNA of Discipline Priest is and always will be that of an offensive healer, so despite being able to combat incoming damage very effectively and carry by keeping your team alive, you can still always look to contribute and carry offensively. Be that from damage, albeit much lower than previous patches, the added pressure from Purge the Wicked, Mind Blasts, Penances, or even a potential Mind Games or Dark Archangel can still greatly assist your team. And of course, you've still got Psychic Scream, Mind Control, and even Purges to help exert your team's pressure even further. Fistweaver is a healing spec that despite having its damage nerfed is still managing to carry games, being head and shoulders above the healing meta right now. Much like previous iterations of Discipline Priest, Fistweaver healing is almost entirely linked to their damage output, which even after the recent nerfs to both Blackout and Rising Sun Kick, in some cases can still rival that of actual DPS players. As with any healer that can rival the damage of a DPS, it's very easy to have a direct impact on the outcome of the game just with your sheer damage output, especially in a place like Solo Shuffle, where as we keep mentioning, damage becomes more and more effective due to the increased effectiveness of dampening. But it's not only the damage output that makes Fist Weaving strong. Even just the healing output that you're capable of doing while Fist Weaving is ridiculous. Being able to effortlessly heal through almost any level of incoming damage allows you to always maintain momentum. This high healing and damage output not only gives you an edge against other healers, but makes it increasingly difficult to effectively punish a Mist Weaver for being mispositioned and out in the open the entire game. 
unless maybe you're facing coordinated players with an abundance of crowd control, but as we know, due to the nature of solo shuffle lobbies and lack of coordination as a whole, this doesn't happen too often. Even then, another crucial aspect of Mistweaver that's starting to have more of an impact in Solo Shuffle is the increased viability of a standard casted Mistweaver build. Because of this, it allows you to drastically change your playstyle based on the lobby or round at hand. So if you're struggling to effectively Fistweave, you can swap next round and still perform at the level of most other healers. Carrying in more of a conventional way by just keeping your team alive with immense healing output and powerful cooldowns like Revival or Life Cocoon. While looking to use their diverse crowd control kit to help secure kills with their team, whether that means using in-cap or an enemy healer, or locking down kill targets with their AoE stun from Leg Sweep. In any case, with the highest damage output of any healer, multiple playstyles, impactful cooldowns all combined with multiple CC options means Mistweaver is more than kitted to carry any game of Solo Shuffle, making them without a doubt one of the best healers to climb come the end of season. If you're serious about climbing rating, playing a spec that has carry potential is a good start, but helping you climb and achieve your end of season goals is what we strive to do at skillcap.com. Let's say for instance you just made a beast mastery hunter. As a skillcap subscriber you can head on over to our website, set the filter, and then be greeted with a course that will teach you everything you'll ever need to know about playing that spec inside of arena, directly from the pros. The best part of these videos is that they are designed to teach you these concepts in less time than it takes for your arena queue to pop. So while you wait for your next Next solo shuffle, you can learn everything you need to know to play like a pro and maximize your improvement rate. Sound too good to be true? Well, don't worry. If you don't see a significant improvement while using skill capped, then you get your money back. No questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the limited time discount link in the description below to learn more and get the rank you've always wanted. So there you have it guys, the best solo carry classes for every role in patch 10.0.7. And as always, thank you for watching, good luck on your end of season climb, and from everyone here at Skillcapped, we hope you have a great rest of your day.